Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. Today we're going to take a look at everybody's favourite astromech droid R2-D2. Here in front of me I have the three original vintage versions of R2-D2. So we have the solid dome R2 here on the left, the sensor scope R2 in the middle and the removable lightsaber one on the right. So let's start by looking at the hard top which is the very first release R2-D2. When R2 was first released, this is the only version you could get. So it's a, a pretty basic little figure, but quite nice because it does have some decent chrome on the top. And chrome is something that a lot of modern figures are missing. But uh, uh, Kenner did a pretty good job on the chrome on this little R2 unit. Uh, the main detail is obviously a sticker. And as everyone knows, if you're trying to connect uh, vintage Star Wars figures, these R2s are probably one of the hardest figures to find with a decent sticker on because they get worn and are uh, torn and ripped so uh, finding a nice looking one is actually pretty hard to do it's a fairly common figure it's just the sticker is always a little bit damaged so with this original r2 basically he's got three points of articulation you can rotate his legs and you can rotate his head which clicks uh, if you turn it as you can hear like that He's uh, pretty easy to find, really, although these, this hardtop version is probably the, uh, the harder of the two original releases, which is this and the Sensoscope one, to find, just because it was only ever released on a uh, Star Wars card. I say that, it was very, very briefly released on an Empire card. So originally R2 came on the uh, New Hope Star Wars card, but there are a few uh, releases of it where it came on the Empire Strikes Back card. As you can see here, this is an Empire card with a hard top R2-D2 on it with the offer for the survival kit. If we turn it around on the back, you can see it's the 41 back card. This is a pretty uh, hard card to find, which is why I like having this one in my collection. I do like R2-D2s, and I think this artwork is actually probably the better picture of R2 and Empire Strikes Back is my favourite film. Next up we have the sensor scope version of R2-D2. It's essentially the same figure as the hardtop one with just a slight modification to the dome and a little sensor scope that pops out if you use your nail to pick it out. Uh, the dome still clicks which is quite cool and it still has exactly the same uh, points of articulation and the sticker is also the same. Now this figure is probably a little bit easier to find than the hardtop one just because it was released for such a long time. This came out on pretty much all the Empire cards and all the Jedi cards until they did the uh, Power of the Force version of R2. So there's probably more of this version of figure out there than the hardtop version. So uh, if you're going to start collecting, this is probably the one that you will get first. Here we have the Sensecope version on a Return of the Jedi card. This is probably the most common card that you'll find it on. Although I say most common, this is again a little bit of an odd card. My collection generally consists of slightly odd cards. This is actually a Tsukuda uh, Japanese version of the card. So on the bottom of the card at the back, uh, there's a sticker that covers all of the original information and has the Japanese details on it. The rest of the card is the same, has all the same sort of information on the figures. This is a 65 back uh, Tsukuda card here. The final release of R2-D2 is the removable lightsaber version. This is probably the hardest one to find, although I have to say in my collecting uh, years I've actually come across quite a few of them and for fairly cheap prices. Obviously it's roughly the same R2-D2. There's a slight difference to the bottom. If you look at the bottoms of the R2-D2 you can see that this lightsaber version the moulding is slightly different this time, uh, and that's a good way of uh, spotting them. If you're ever trying to collect them and you see them in listings on eBay, if you can see the bottom and not the top, if it looks like that, it's the harder to find version of the figure. On the top, we have the same dome. It clicks, and when you turn it, the lightsaber pops up a bit, as you can see here, and then pops back down again. So let's rotate that around, and you can see there's a very short, stubby lightsaber in here. Obviously, it's been shortened so that it fits inside his body. If you put this in uh, Luke's hand, it does look remarkably small compared to the normal lightsaber that he comes with. Uh, but it's an incredibly rare piece, so you always want R2 with this little lightsaber. Overall, it's probably the worst figure out of the three for me, just because it's got a bit on it that uh, is easily lost. The other two are nice sort of compact figures with nothing that you can lose on them. Uh, the lightsaber version is just a bit annoying because that doesn't actually sort of cl click in place. It just falls out, so uh, an easily lost weapon. 
I've always liked this RT figure. As a child, I only ever had the Sensorscope version. It wasn't until I started collecting that I got the hardtop version. Uh, and this was one that I was bought quite early on in my sort of toy playing time. And it's a figure I did love. I always liked R2-D2. He's just, he's quite a sort of, the, the star of Star Wars, shall we say, for me. And uh, in recent years, I've been collecting lots of them, which is why I've uh, started collecting some carded versions. If you're going to collect these, obviously the Sensorscope version is definitely the easiest to get. Uh, you just have to be careful that these stickers are in good condition. As you can see, mine are not too bad. Uh, these you can pick up for sort of five to ten pounds, the Sensorscope ones. Uh, the hard top ones are harder to get, so you'll pay slightly more than that. Finally, we have the lightsaber version. At the moment, prices for these are over the top really uh, you can pay anything from 30 to 100 pounds for them but really uh, if you're patient and give enough time you can still find them cheap i found this one in a second hand shop and i paid three pounds for it the one i had previous to this i paid one pound for so uh, they are still out there you just have to be patient and really my top tip for collecting star wars of any sort is be patient don't just go crazy and spend lots of money because really there's a lot of this stuff out there so i hope that's been of interest to you and thanks for watching thanks for watching toy Poloy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Poloi on Twitter and Facebook.